Ça marche It works I took up everything, I quit Instagram, I came back. Ça marche Ouais Ok, we're live It's working Yes Oh, yay Ok, um, I'm so sorry for this, I don't know what happened. Um, this feels like... Hor th this is horrible, but anyway, this is the thing about doing a live video. But we made it work! So, what I was saying, like an idiot with nobody hearing me before, was that um, I was pretty much saying that we're gonna be... I'm gonna obviously call Noemi online uh, in a few seconds. But just before I do, I just wanted to let you know that not everybody here has seen the film. So if you guys are gonna comment and ask questions, just please do not spoil the movie. You know, and don't spoil some very specific scene that we want to kind of leave for everybody else to discover. Um, so if you want to ask more about, you know, the way that we work together or whatever question comes up to your mind, you know, how everything happened, um, that'd be great. Uh, anything about the film, you know, as long as we don't spoil. Um, so yeah, um, I'm going to be speaking in English and then uh, with Noemi. And then if some of you guys are French and want to hear some French, just kind of hollow and we'll try and um and and make sure we can make it work um okay so let me try and invite noemi now uh, yeah we've got some people from mexico no spoilers hey hello hello yes have fun this have is fun. my first live uh <laughs> Yeah, I think Instagram. this is my first two. This is so funny. I think this is like what this global world crisis has brought, you know, kind of this strange way of communicating with everybody since you guys can't go into theaters and watch the movie. So do we have anybody here that has seen the film? <coughs> Hi. From the Philippines as well, oh, from wow. Spain. Wow, nice. Italy. Hello. Yay, we've got so many countries. Hey. <laughs> ah, on a du français. We've got some French. Ah, bonjour, bonsoir. <laughs> um, so, well, I guess before we talk about the film, Noemi, I did want to ask you a little bit about what's happening right now with you and the confinement. You know, what are you doing of your day? Ah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Nothing, uh, nothing much. I'm with my uh, dog uh, right here. Oh, sleeping. <laughs> Still a puppy Alone, young. by myself uh, in Paris. I know. So nothing much. Uh, movies and yeah, food. Yeah. And that's it. yeah. And what about you? Uh, it's kind of the same. I mean, I guess I'm trying to write. Um, but with everything that's happening in the world, it's a little bit difficult <laughs> to be inspired, you know. Um, but we're trying to write, watching movies as well, reading, um, you know, and uh, yeah, that's what we're doing right now. Um, but I guess what you, what I miss the most is like, you know, seeing friends, having drinks, you know, and I guess, hugging people, especially if you're on your own, at least, you know, I have someone here. Yeah. Yeah. I I'm just here. have my dog. It's <laughs> well, at least there's something to hug. Yeah. You know? Like yeah, I'm... so we've got some people asking. Oh, it's going quick, the question. Yes, I'm... but I see we've got someone who asked about where did the idea come from and why, I think. I didn't catch the name, but, you know, I did catch the question. Um, so, yes, I guess if you guys are here... Oh, you all... oh who? And... Yeah? Hug the dog! <laughs> um, if you guys are here, then that means that you all know about the movie Jumbo. Jumbo, it's about a young 
woman who is in search of who she is and her identity and ends up finding it at night when she works at a fun fair park, um, you know, and finds it with one of the main attractions, a machine, ends up falling in love with it and decides to tell her mother, who's not very happy about it, you know. Uh, so the way that the whole idea came from um, is that I was simply just reading an article about um, a woman who had fallen in love with and married the Eiffel Tower. And I guess that was quite strange, made me laugh and smile, you know. Um, but it also got me really curious to just know more um, about this person whose name is Erica Eiffel. And, you know, um, I think the idea of marrying, not just like being in love and having that attraction towards an object, but going to the extent of marrying um, an object and publicly announcing it was so intense that I needed to know more. So then, you know, I started talking with Erica and, um, and she really inspired the way that we decided to talk about the film because we could have gone one way, which is talk about how weird the subject is, you know? But instead, and that's something that we'd know, with Noemi, we really talked about when preparing the character is that we really just wanted to tell a love story, you know? Um, yeah, we all can't wait to see it in the cinemas as well. <laughs> Sorry, I'm reading the comments at the same time. Oh, and someone said, why does Noemi look like me? Did, do you guys, did you guys notice that we look a little bit alike or not? Look what? what T'as dit quoi Est-ce que, est que les gens ont remarqué qu'on se ressemblait un petit peu Ah <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so I, a lot of people have been saying that we look alike. Um, and I think, I don't know if you guys see Maybe that. Maybe a little bit. Yes, yeah. people, a little bit. You know, I think uh, Noemi is much hotter than I am. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I take... The, I, I casted the better version of me, I guess, maybe, without wanting it or knowing. <laughs> um, what was the most challenging part about building your character? Mm, go for it. Uh -huh. I think it's the... Uh, the relation with the Jumbo, with the machine, uh, how to create... Uh, We wanted really to, the spectator feels what the, the emotion of a love story. And it was hard to, at the beginning, to build this uh, uh, relation since it was not, you know, it was not, uh, it was the first time I was playing with uh, a non-human uh, <laughs> partner. So, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, this was the most hard part. Yeah, I mean, I tried to make it easy for you. I tried to make him handsome and sexy, you know, just so it'd be a bit easier. But <laughs> I don't know if that helped. Uh, yes. So... Um, uh, the oil scene. Oh, yeah. We, we can talk about that oil scene, but we don't want to spoil too much. Let's talk mm -hmm. about orgasm, maybe. I mean, not in the literal sense, but... You know, this is a character that is uh, figuring out who she is. And when you figure out who you are, you also figure out your sexuality. And I think, uh, Noemi, um, I think I, it, I think when we talked about the character, one, one thing that we really talked about was, you know, um, our relationship to our body and, you know, oh, some people are making funny things in the apartment, yes. sorry. <laughs> But anyway, I'll continue. So, um Yeah, we talked about, you know, the, the uh, um, how do you say, the, um, how, we, how we think about our body when we're discovering ourselves. And so obviously that comes with, you know, the first senses of sexuality and identity and all of that. And that oil scene we're talking about, which is an orgasm scene uh, with the machine, was something that was very challenging for you, Noemi, no? Tu peux me redire un petit peu en... Uh, I'm going to translate for Noemi sometimes. Donc, uh, je disais, la, la, la scène d'huile, je disais que le personnage, en fait, on parlait beaucoup de... Uh, que le, le, le personnage, uh, bah, c'est forcément un personnage qui se cherche, qui cherche son identité. Et donc, uh, cette scène d'huile, c'est la première découverte de l'orgasme. Mais en même temps, uh, en tant qu'actrice, c'est une scène uh, bah, seule avec de l'huile ou une machine. Donc, uh, quel était le challenge pour toi, tu vois, uh, là-dedans, quoi dans la scène euh, d'huile, 
Tu parles ouais. de cette scène vraiment Oui, mais sans, sans spoiler la scène, tu vois, on ne veut pas trop, mais juste, euh, tu vois, le, le rapport de ce personnage qui cherche sa sexualité et son identité à, avec une machine, et avec de l'huile, la matière, le, le métal, tout quoi. Bah pour moi, cette scène d'huile, donc qu'on ne spoilera pas, elle était... Euh... En fait, je me suis laissé, complètement laissée guider par toi parce qu'elle était très technique euh, au niveau des positions pour que... Bah ouais, mais j'ai peur de spoiler maintenant, mais... Euh, donc elle était très technique et il fallait là-dedans que malgré tout j'arrive à, à remettre un peu de d'émotion mais là je, je me comment dire je me laissais porter par ton idée forte ta vision forte de, de, de la forme ouais. en fait de cette scène qui est vraiment dans la forme et euh, qui est très différente de toutes les autres scènes d'amour avec Jumbo ouais. où là là je devais créer vraiment un truc avec euh, avec la machine et c'était presque un dialogue avec, avec, euh, avec moi-même, avec Jeanne, un, un miroir en fait. Jumbo, c'est une machine et, et elle, a, elle est beaucoup plus à l'aise avec, euh, avec les objets qu'avec les êtres humains parce qu'elle y projette aussi euh, ce qu'elle veut. C'est plus neutre, est, elle, a moins de... ouais, elle est plus elle-même, elle est plus ouverte, plus large, plus en vie. Et donc, on a travaillé vraiment sur le sur le corps, sur ce côté beaucoup moins fermé, beaucoup plus ouvert et heureuse quand elle est avec Jumbo, quoi. Yeah, so just translating very quickly for the English-speaking people, uh, the, our international Sorry. crowd. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, the thing with... Uh, Noemi was talking about, you know, the relationship with the machine and building that character. It was a lot about textures, whether it's with flesh, human flesh versus... <laughs> oil or versus, versus metal or things like that. And it's obviously not something that's easy to do. Um, but the, the, the hard thing was balancing the technical aspect of things and then keeping the sensuality and the emotions, even though everything, you know, was always technical. We didn't have so many VFX, um, but so we tried to do a lot of it live, but still, you know, uh, because we're working with the machine, uh, Noemi had to sometimes Noemi was very constrained. She had like, you know, to walk left or walk right and oh look at the cutie dog. This is really hard to be concentrated and talk about the movie and yet be like looking at all your really cute comments and the cute dog and like actually I had a beer somewhere because this is Saturday night and I don't even have that beer anymore. And I just want to say that I see Bendar commenting a lot, yeah. Bendor, if you're watching, I know who you are. <laughs> um, but anyway, so yeah, the um, uh, anyway, I, I did see another question that I thought was funny, um, was cool. Uh, Noemi, what when was the what was the funniest thing on set to do, or the funniest moments with the crew, maybe? Or oh, there was a lot of uh, funny moments on set. I think it's the moment when I, I, it was funny and it was at the same time not funny at all. It was when I saw Emmanuel Berko who was playing my mother. Oh, yeah. And she was uh, doing for the first time the jumbo tour. How do you say? The. Oh, yeah. She was going around the, the attraction for the first time. You actually see that scene in the trailer when Noemi introduces her mother to Ojan, oh, sorry, introduces her mother to the machine. So that's the scene that you're talking about. And I was actually, it was the beginning of the shooting and I was, I told Zoe that I was really scared of the machine, of the, how do you say? Yeah, of attraction. attraction? Just, say, just, just say attractions and jumbo, you know. Attractions. Cool friend. So when I saw Emmanuel, really 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 scared but like she was dying on the attraction and I, it was funny and at the same time I, I was okay I'm gonna quit the, the part and I'm gonna leave now and uh, yeah and finally it went well I don't know yeah. if it makes sense what I'm saying but Yeah, well, the funny thing is that Noemi didn't tell me that she was afraid of attractions. I asked her and I was like, listen, we're going to be playing with the huge machine. Are you comfortable with it? You know, if I'm going to, if we're going to be working on that, you need to be comfortable with it. She's like, yeah, no problem. No problem. And then when the scene actually happened, I guess, you know, everybody was just like, 
uh, Noemi felt kind of scared, but I didn't know when she just went on it. And then, you know, I thought she was playing the fact that she was scared, but no. And I think the fact that Emmanuel was playing so well, the fact that she was scared of the ride just made it even harder for you to get on there. But, you know, I guess you push through. Um, that's the thing, actually. There was a lot of sequences. I think it was your first time as well doing some kind of um, high, uh, stunts, you know, because there's lots stunts. of... So it was your yes. first time doing stunts and, you know, I think that was part of the excitement of working on the film and doing stunts for the first time, but at the same time, it's a little bit scary, you know, being harnessed, you know, going like 10 meters high in the sky and then being, you know, like pulled by a cable and just your whole life depends on the stunts coordinators. And she was, I know he was really cool about it because she did all of the stunts for self, you know, we had a stunt but double. But I was scared. I was not fun for me at the beginning. But I would say the it's the maybe the same thing that you can tell to yourself before to go this movie that okay, I I'm scared. I don't know what I'm gonna see or when you yeah, when you're scared to do an attraction and and this film is when you go and you accept to let go. Yeah, you accept yeah. to let go, and and then when I I did this scene and I had to jump on jumbo and do the tour, uh, it's the moment where when I first um, uh, create a link with a uh, jumbo because I was talking to jumbo, saying to jumbo that I was scared, you know, like you talk to I don't know to yourself or to God because you're too scared about something and. You want to give you some force, some power, some energy, and some uh, uh, some reassure yourself. Yeah, and and then I convinced myself as Jeanne, I, as I was playing Jeanne, and she was in love with this uh, um, tour. Uh, yeah, attraction. Attraction. So I I was pretending that I was enjoying it and and finally I was enjoying it and so mm. then I was I was connected to Jumbo after this scene yeah <clears throat> yeah yeah, yeah. Um, I saw wait um, you know one thing that you said was um, one thing that you said that, that the movie was about letting go and I think that's a really good way of actually talking about the film more generally as well is that this is really about letting go of your fear. This is a movie about accepting who you are and accepting other people's differences. Um, so, um, so yeah, it, it is about letting go. It's about letting go of our prejudices. It's about letting go of our fears um, and it's about accepting each other. So um, hopefully it's a very, you know, positive message that we're trying to send out there with, you know, a story that seems extraordinary, but in a way is very universal in that quest for a search of identity or anything. So I see someone asking if the film is on Netflix. No, it's not. For now, what happened is obviously with COVID-19 uh, all over the world, the film cannot have an actual theatrical release. So um, we've had three countries with exception, which is um, Belgium, Luxembourg, and Holland where you guys get a premium VOD just just for the time of the confinement, and then the movie goes back into theaters. Um, but in France, it's going to be released in theaters as well as soon as the cinema is reopened. So we don't know when yet, but as soon as. And so everywhere else internationally, everything is kind of postponed and taking more time. Um, so yeah. And I... Ouais, William K. en français, il y a des français. <laughs> Um, yeah, so anyway, so the reason why we can for only those three countries is that they're countries that also produce, uh, co-produce the film and, um, you know, smaller countries than France, and we kind of had to react really fast and chose to send it out on VOD, but, you know, this is a movie for the theaters, so if you can go see it in the theaters, see it in the theaters, it'd be amazing, um, you would make my life, you know, a dream if you go see it in the theaters and then send us comments on Instagram, whatever you, you guys want. Um, 
So yeah, so I see other people asking, you know, why is it called Jumbo? Noemi, do you know why it's called Jumbo? Do you know why it's called Jumbo? Did I tell you? C'était pas pas de rapport avec euh, avait pas un rapport avec l'éléphant un peu yes, quand même. There was, there was. Um, the original idea for the name Jumbo was just I was just looking for a fun, cute nickname. And you know, I grew up in Africa, and in some parts of Africa, in Standard of Africa, you say Jumbo Buana to say welcome. So it kind of started from there, and then I quickly made the connection with the elephant Jumbo, uh, which is more famously known as Dumbo, the elephant from the Disney. Um, but the original elephant that the Dumbo, the Disney, is inspired from is called Dumbo. And I just love the fact that he was. Um, I just love the fact that he was so. Um, how do you say, um, that this elephant was so special because he was the first elephant, I think, that was brought in Europe. And at the same time, he was very miserable uh, because of the way he was treated. So I just liked, I just thought it was a very empathetic, uh, empathetic, empathetic character, uh, the jumbo elephant. So I really loved kind of giving that name to, um, to the machine. Uh, and I think it's cool. It's kind of short and catchy. And, you know, hopefully you guys remember the name Jumbo. And it's easy to remember when you're talking about the film to people, you know. Yeah, no, I mean, you don't have a wife. I had my beer somewhere, but with this whole crisis at the beginning of this live, I, I kind of lost it in the midst of it. So I'm stuck without a beer. I'm uh, drinking limonade, not beer. Oh, limonade. No, mais c'est bizarre. I guess, you know, it's the cliche of French, we should be drinking wine, although we are, but not tonight. We're being very good in giving the example. Um, so trying to read what you guys are saying from Scotland, University's mascot. Oh, yeah, Jumbo the Elephant. Why did I choose Noemi for the movie? Well, that is very obvious because she's a very good actress. <laughs> um, But if you guys want a little insight on the casting um, at the time, uh, so we shot this movie about a year and a half ago, almost two years ago now. Um, so now it's like with everything that's happening, it's being postponed. But, you know, uh, Jumbo, c'est pas une marque de limonade au Congo. Peut-être, mais je sais pas. Maybe it is. Um, But um, what was I saying? I forgot. Je disais quoi? Vraiment, je ne dors jamais comme ça. Je ne l'ai pas drogué. Hein. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's true. Did you did you give him some drugs? He's just sleeping the whole way through your dog. <laughs> He's cute. Um, which part of Africa did I grow up? I grew up in the Congo, the Democratic Republic of Congo. And uh, in Ivory Coast, uh, most of the time, more in Ivory Coast than the RDC, DRC, uh, Congo. But um, yeah, until I was about 14 or 15, and then I moved to Australia. Yes. Uh, platform? We don't know yet which platform. Um, the ones that I can tell you are the ones in Belgium and Holland. I think uh, Universine. Wu, uh, BTV, Dalton. Uh, les producteurs, si vous voulez mettre des commentaires parce que j'en ai oublié, uh, allez-y. <laughs> so producers, if you want to like, I know you're there watching, so if you want to give out more info, but I think it's already, it's like, you can find it online where all the platforms it's on now. Uh, as for later, we don't know yet. We're trying to figure out now, you know, which platform it's going to be at. But it will be Proximus Lumière, j'ai oublié, voilà, platform. Um, but it's going to be released internationally. I know it's, it's going to be going to, I think, Thailand and, and Taiwan and uh, for now, for sure, but it's going to be going to more places in Canada, the US at some point as well. Um, and, uh, you know, France, Belgium, Luxembourg, Holland, um, uh, Japan, I think as well. Um, and, you know, probably more countries, but we're just at the start because, you know, what we wanted to do with Jumbo was really just show in festivals first uh, all over the world. And then, you know, it's after festivals that you start selling to countries so that you can show in that place, you know, in specific places. Anyway, uh, t'es bilingue, Noemi, ou pas? 
Are you bilingual, Noemi? People Not really. Bilingual. No, I, I can. It's, it's okay. <laughs> I can speak English, but I don't have uh, all the words mm. that I need to speak, you know, perfectly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The name of the dog is Gino. Gino? It has it. It, yeah. does, it has an Italian I almost kind. jumbo. <laughs> Gino jumbo. Yeah, I think you were meant to. Oh, did you guys know that Noemi? Before she was called Noemi, she was supposed to be called Zoe. So I think that's yeah. The uh, when I uh, was born, my name was Zoe, and then they changed a couple of days after. Yeah, yeah. So I think you know, not only do we look alike, but we had the same name, so it was really meant to be, you know. Um. But yeah, um, I think, uh, Noemi, I was curious to know um, what attracted you to the script? Like, why were you not like, this is a crazy story. I'm never going to take that risk and I'm not going to do this. I'm, I'm just going to go for it. Why? <laughs> I thank you for it. I'm very happy you did. But <laughs> I like to go towards... Uh, um movies or a script or a role that I'm not uh, comf like comfortable in the way that I'm scared because you don't tu sors de ta zone de confort how you say yeah, you that? get out of your comfort zone yeah and uh, I think that was an incredible love story and I love love stories <laughs> and that one was like so Yeah, so different, so powerful. Like, I felt when I was reading the script that I was reconnecting with something, you know, from, from like, emotions, but from the inside also. From, I don't know how to explain that, but it's, yeah, I think it's a movie that reconnects with, with our own sensibilities that are often maybe weird or different or I feel like Jan sometimes in a way that I I you know I don't I feel sometime out of the world like I don't know how to explain that but not comfortable all the time with people and I'm in my mind in my brain I don't know how to say that mm. and so I think that it was interesting I, I, I was in love being with her Uh, and uh, also, I think it's, she's a really strong woman. She is a woman with no age or with all the ages. And that she is modern and strong because she has a desire, different desire. And, and she goes towards these desires quickly. And quickly, she asks her mother to, to understand it. And I think mm -hmm. this is... She... she Yeah, I will not say the end, but yeah, it's a strong character. I think that that's what I yeah. loved, and I love the 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 relation with the mother and how how you deal with the fact that you not you're not exactly what your parents expected you to be, and how at what point you you decide to be yourself and and grab the the end of your parents and okay this is me come see and so that i love to yeah and you know it's funny you say that and you talk about that because i think when i was writing the script and even when i met erica ethel who's the person who inspired the story the way that i personally connected to her was that um capacity to um like to to be okay with who she was and to kind of stay it out to people this is who i am and just take it or leave it, you know? Um, so I think that's a lot of what I tried to put in the script as well. Um, it was, you know, that search of identity and just like, you know, when I first wrote the script, it was about eight years ago. So that was a long time ago. It was a difficult story to kind of bring to you and bring to the screen because of the subject matter. Um, but obviously I was younger, you know, early, very early 20s. Um, and at the time, I was also looking for, you know, who I was, young adult, you know, you search for your identity and sexuality. And I think I put a lot of that in the character of that shy character trying to kind of come out of her shell and, you know, show to the world who she is. And I think for me, making that specific movie um, was kind of a way to say to the world, you know, this is me. And you might think, you know, because of 
the way I talk or the way I look or the way I dress that I'm one person, but really the way of expressing myself, you know, as an artist is through the script, through the story and specifically through the characters. So I think that, you know, um, they're glad that you saw that in the character because that's really something that I was trying to kind of push forward, you know, and, um, and, and hopefully that, you know, you can take a little bit of that with you guys at the end of the film, you know? Um, do I have plans to make more movies like Jumbo? Um, I have plans to make more movies, hopefully. <laughs> Trying to make them. Uh, I have, you know, it depends. I try to not be like, oh, I need now to do movies like Jumbo. What I know I want to do are movies that are really heartfelt, um, movies that are universal in, in their emotions. And definitely I like the awkwardness of some sub subject matters. And I like to talk about outcast generally. I think I felt, you know, as an outcast kind of all my life, uh, growing up as a foreigner in every country I was. And in a way, it shows in, in every story I, I, I sort of tackle. Um, and I like just weird stories as well. So it can be all of that. It can be one of those elements, but I definitely want to keep making movies with at least one of those things in that, if not everything together, you know, but it kind of depends on the story, you know. Um, Anyway, uh, est-ce qu'on va faire des tours en avant-première Yes, uh, on va <laughs> faire deux tours en avant-première, tout ce qu'on n'a pas pu faire en fait avant uh, la sortie du film. I'm speaking French because this is for the French release. Um, tout ce qu'on n'a pas pu faire avant, ben, en fait, le, tout s'est arrêté du, du jour au lendemain. Donc, je pense qu'on va essayer de reprendre un peu tout ce qu'on avait de prévu en termes de promo dès que le film ressort. Après, ça va être compliqué parce que, comme vous savez, bah, vu qu'il y a énormément de films qui vont sortir en même temps, euh, il va falloir qu'on se démarque. Et euh, ce n'est pas facile de se démarquer quand on est face à des énormes gros blockbusters américains. Donc, on a vraiment besoin de vous euh, pour que non seulement vous en parliez autour de vous, que vous veniez voir le film, venez le voir avec des amis. Euh, et voilà. Oui, Bordeaux. Bah, on adorait Bordeaux. Ce n'est pas une ville facile euh, de, de faire venir des films indépendants comme ça, en fait. Mais on adorait, bien sûr, venir vous le montrer à Bordeaux. On va essayer, en tout cas. Voilà. Mais euh... donc, euh, donc, voilà. Noémie, est-ce que tu veux, tu veux dire... <rire> J'ai euh... un gros de papier toilette pour les chiens. <rire> OK. <rire> est-ce que tu as fait ta réserve, toi, de, de PQ Est-ce que tu es bien... Euh... Oui, ah oui, bah oui l'avant-première au hall a été annulée, malheureusement, mais l'avant-première au hall, je pense que c'est. Enfin, on va vraiment tout faire pour euh, la refaire. Donc, gardez les yeux ouverts pour l'avant-première au hall. Ah je... non, ça, ça serait bien, c'est ma ville en plus. Ah ben bah voilà, la ville de Noémie. Euh... C'est quoi ta musique euh, qui te berce pendant ton confinement What's your music during your quarantine What are you listening to Qui Toi Moi Toi ah, euh, j'arrive. <rire> j'arrive pas à écouter de musique. Ah, c'est vrai, tu en restes dans le silence. Ouais. Ah ouais. Non, moi je mets de la musique tout le temps. Mais bon, enfin euh, tout le temps. J'écoute plein de trucs différents, mais évidemment j'ai beaucoup écouté Manu Dibango qui nous a quitté malheureusement à cause du, du Covid 19. Et moi c'est un artiste qui a bercé mon enfance. Après j'aime bien le dernier justement. J'aime beaucoup le, le dernier. Euh... Euh, le dernier euh, album de, de Christine de Queens qui vient de sortir. J'aime bien. Voilà, donc je suis, elle fait des lives aussi sur Instagram, donc je suis aussi ça. De temps en temps, je vais la voir. Voilà. Et um, someone asked me if I thought that Jumbo was a political film, un film engagé. I don't know how you say that, that has a statement. Um, I definitely think it is a film that is engagé. It's not politically uh, making a statement, but it's more a social statement about the way that we interact with each other and the way we talk to each other, the way we look at each other, the tolerance we have for each other. And I think specifically now, because of, the, of everything that's happening in the world, we need to have so much solidarity. And that solidarity is about, you know, um, you know, it's whether it's solidarity with people that look like you and not the same as you or people that are very different from you, you know, just giving that helping hand. So I think, You know, it's a movie that encourages that and that kind of love and, you know, and um, it might feel cheesy a little bit, but in a way it's so important specifically now, you know, so hopefully, you know, you, people that go and watch this movie are entertained, but also come out with 
thoughts and discussions and debate, you know, things to talk about after the film. Euh... Des films qu'on a conseillés en confinement. Vas-y, commence. <rire> Euh, ah, moi, j'ai re-regardé fen... re Fenêtre sur cours. Euh, comment tu ah, le dis oui. euh... En anglais, c'est quoi Hitchcock's film, uh, Through Window, how do you say What's the title in English I don't know. People peeping, like looking at each other. Um, no, but, no, but... Can anybody give the comments give us the answer Ah, that's a good question. Uh, Noemi, what is your favorite... Unless it spoils the movie. But what's your favorite scene in the film? The favorite scene ah. in the film or sh shot in the film? It's rear window. I, sorry, that's the previous question, like Hitchcock. Sorry, we're delayed a little bit. But rear window, yeah. And yes, your favorite scene in the film? Huh. Mais à tourner ou à regarder, c'est pas pareil. Um, uh, well, maybe tell us both. Um, your favorite scene to watch or your favorite scene to shoot? And tell us both. I love, uh, mais je, je vais spoiler. Ah, okay, okay, don't spoil then. What were you? I love okay. the end, but I will not okay. say what it is. Okay. But I love, uh, I, I actually, I love to shoot the end, and I love to watch the end. Oh, the last yay. Thing I love. Cool. So what I will not say what it is. <laughs> yeah. So someone asked, what was the most challenging thing about writing the script? Uh, most challenging thing about the script was um, finding the right tone. Because this is a very difficult subject for people to understand. Um, so... Uh, So, so I wanted people to have empathy. I wanted to allow people to laugh with the film as well. And then I wanted people to potentially cry if they were touched by the film. Um, one second. Ah! <laughs> She was trying to hide. I'm like, I'm going to put her on the spot. Um, um, so yeah, so finding the right tone. And then, you know, it has to be fantastical, um, but also grounded because this is inspired by true stories. So it's, it's a lot of mix of genres. And that specific tone that hopefully is unique to the film was what was what was the hardest, you know, and making sure that, you know, I could sell the idea to people and to actors already on the script, even though they hadn't seen the way that it was going to come out and look that they would trust me from what I would tell them, but also from just reading the script, you know, uh, that it was detailed enough that they could just have faith in the story, the script, that it would be and work out well, you know? Um, so, oh, Sarah, go Sarah. <laughs> How long have you had Gino, Noemi? Uh, he is seven months. I had him at uh, two and a half months. He's already really big, the dog, right? <laughs> yeah, but it's it's just seven months. It's yes, it's fou. It's gonna get so much bigger. <laughs> Gino a beaucoup de succès, ouais, effectivement, ouais. Oui, <laughs> il a peut-être une, une petite réponse à ah, il ouvre les yeux. Gino, tu veux lécher la caméra? Je pas si vous avez... I don't know if you notice it, but he's he exactly as the face of the emoticon. You say emoticon? Yeah, emoticon, yeah. Of the dog on the, on iPhone. The oh, signs yeah. are here in the white and the brown. Uh... Yes, indeed. Do we want to work together again? Noemi, do you want to work with me again? Please? I don't know. <laughs> you don't know? Yes, <laughs> of course. Yeah, you know, it was a very, Noemi is a very complicated actress, so I'd have to think about it again, but no, I'm kidding. No, 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 Noemi is very easy on set. Obviously, you've all seen it. She's a great actress. She can do anything. She can be a very, you know, controlled character. She can be a very extreme character. Um, she can, you know, be crazy. She can be super smart. So, yeah, she's for sure... Um, 
for sure I would work with her again. I'm actually, when I'm writing my new scripts, I'm thinking, oh, could Noemi do this? Let's see, let's, you know. So yeah, hopefully we, we, we work together again. We have to find the right project, but hopefully we do work again together. So, mm -hmm. you know, and thank God at the end, even though this was a really hard shoot, Noemi, you know, because we were very ambitious with the story, um, but, you know, even though it was a hard shoot, uh, the actors and and myself, you know, Bastien Bouillon, the other actress, I want to give him a shout out because he's an amazing actor. Um, Emmanuel Berco, maybe she's watching us, maybe not. I don't know. I haven't seen her here. The Vin I, I, I saw a question about Emmanuel that how it was like it was to work with her and how is she when she is acting. Actually, it was so much fun with Emmanuel. But like, she is really, really generous uh, actress and really funny also so it, it's and she's not scared she likes to go 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 you know she doesn't have she, she it's not that she doesn't have limits but she likes we're kind of the same just to to yeah. to propose and it was a good triangle tri triangle between zoe emmanuel and i and and even if she is a director, I think for you it was cool because she was not telling you anything except if, if you were, were asking something. Yeah, I think, you know, um, the thing with um, the thing with you guys as two actresses, you guys are so physical and you're not afraid of touching each other, falling on the floor, you know, or hugging each other, being very close. There's something very physical and that's really something that I needed for the characters. So when we did castings, there was obviously one casting, which was about making sure that Noemi and Emmanuel would fit and have some kind of connection. And from the very first time we tried that, it was obvious that there was a real connection. And I think, you know, we're all kind of friends now after the film as well, staying in touch. Um, so yeah, no, no, it's, uh, it was really cool. Um, I see the time and I see that we are, uh, you know, uh, extending. So um, I don't know, maybe we can take maybe one or two last questions and then we're going to have to leave you guys because pretty much because I had no connection at the start, I had to go to my living room and I was like, my whole family has had to rush out of the room. So I think they're all having like a beer or something in a bedroom. So I'm going to have to release this room. Any deal with U.S. distributors? Yes, soon, soon. It will be coming out to the U.S., don't worry. So do we have one more question? Um, ah, c'est une bonne question, ça. It's a good question. Noemi, did you, was there a lot of improvisation on the film? How did you feel uh, Not that much, actually. I mean, oh la la. Beaucoup de vent. Um, there, w there was improvisation, but they were cadré, comment tu dis? Um, they, um, they were improvs, but they were within some kind of confines, like, you know. Yeah, yeah. like, yeah, like uh, we had a lot of, more maybe with Emmanuel when we were, you know, we had the dialogues, everything, but sometimes we were proposing new stuff, proposing new energy, new new dialogues sometimes but uh, yeah i would say a little bit but what do you say no i would I'm say that's true. i mean the thing is because it was a very specific script and like i said before the tone was really important to get so that we couldn't really go so far away from the dialogue and we couldn't really go completely free but i wanted to make sure that the performances were really authentic and that it felt very instinctive so the you know, we would set up the scene, the blocking, but then uh, Noemi and Emmanuel would kind of really make it their own. And if they wanted to change something as they were acting or change, even not the dialogue necessarily, but change the rhythm that we had put in place, we kind of let it be. And um, I also made sure I really wanted to make sure that Noemi, you had enough takes to express yourselves so we could really try some things because we would do sometimes seven, eight, ten takes, you know, and not because the performances were not good, but just because we're like, okay, we have this, but let's try and get the character a little bit further there. And so we're trying something. Yeah, and we were, yeah, we were trying to find different energies, different, uh, and sometimes we had to, 
get out of the road of the yeah the dialogues and everything to come back better you know what i mean yeah and so because yeah. it's a story about also two women's <laughs> i know that you were expecting me to say women's so <laughs> i say oh yeah no <laughs> But no, no, I'm talking about the the people because I made mistake all, all the time. I say women, women instead, instead of women. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know if the film is going to go to Mexico yet, but we're going for South America as well. We're trying to get it out there. If you guys want to see the film in your country, make sure distributors know about it so that you know there's something going on in your country to bring the film to you guys because we're trying to get it all over it's just you know sometimes it's not easy you just have to make sure people want to see it and pe like some people from the profession want to show it so yeah so, but hopefully you know it'll do a big festival run once everything uh, reopens you know festivals and everything we were supposed to go you know, to Russia, Tur Turkey and everything with festivals with the film. So hopefully we'll go again, um, you know, um, you know, the U.S. as well, Canada, a lot of places. Um, so, yeah, women's. I think you've got to hit mm -hmm. me with your women's, women's. Um, okay, guys. Um, I think we're going to, I'm really going to have to release this living room. Um, but I want to thank everybody for being here. I want to thank everybody for not spoiling anything. Uh, everybody for interacting. This was fun. Really cool questions. Um, and uh, yeah, Noemi, do you want to say a little something before we end this live? Uh, yeah, I don't want to end. <laughs> I know, right? This is so cool. We're like having a conversation. I know. I'm like, but you know. Uh, no, but I'm so, I'm so alone. I'm so by myself. Yeah. Uh, someone was asking, how is your confinement going? <laughs> I don't really, I, I don't really like to be alone. I'm, I'm not used to yeah. be alone for such a, but, um, especially when you're an actress and you're on set all the time or doing promotional tour, you're always surrounded, you know, by either professionals or friends or, you know, like we're not mm. used to being, you know, and yeah. And, I think about you guys. As I well. think it's like, good at the end, but uh, to 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 be by. But it's such a yeah a terrible moment. I mean, for yeah. a lot of people. So exactly, so. and I think especially being alone, you spend that much more time maybe looking at the news and seeing you know, and we all feel how horrible it is out there, and um, you know, and mm -hmm. we're all out there at eight p.m. clapping for the hospitals and you know all these guys that are you know putting their lives at risk and trying to save other people. Yeah. And I think the more alone you are, the more you're looking at that and also um, taking in the anxiety of that. So, you know, um, that's why it's cool to do a live here and there. And it's also, you know, fun to call each other up. I hope you guys are also enjoying, you know, like Skyping or FaceTiming with people, you know, sharing recipes with people or, you know, sharing yoga tricks. I don't know if you guys are doing yoga, you know, all of that. It's cool. It's all about sharing. Yeah. yeah. So I think my producers want me to re remind everybody that if you are in Belgium, Holland or Luxembourg, you can see the film on VOD, but only right now, because the soon, as soon as confinement is over, we're taking it up and go bring it back to theaters. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, well, to, 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 okay. to go see this, uh, if you can to go this oh. incredible, huh? Well, vas -y, vas -y. No, if I'm you can to see this incredible movie that I'm pre really proud that I did with in uh, like actors that I really love, like Emmanuel. I don't know if she, if she's watching us. <laughs> Hope. If she's watching, we're sending her love. And Sam Luik as well. I don't know if he's watching. Yeah. We're sending, and him and him sending him love, you know. So, yeah. And, uh, and yeah. And, uh, yeah, watch this movie as soon as you can. And I think we can uh, give uh, positive energy to all the nurses and doctors uh, and... and um, 
patients and yeah. people who are working now. Maybe it's good. And, and thank you to everybody. Yeah. And don't hesitate if you can help your neighbor or even, you know, if you guys were supposed to go see a doctor and it's been canceled, maybe if you can't afford it, still pay it because they're independents and they're going to need all the help to make sure they survive this crisis. You know, we're authors and artists and we're independents as well. And it's not an easy moment for anyone. Um, so, yeah, any solidarity, anything you can think of or, you know, um, just trust your gut and go along with it. So cool. Stay safe too. Stay safe, stay home, and thank you for watching, everybody. And have a great night and day, depending on where you are in the world. Um, bye, thank you guys, and you know, say bye. Gino. Enjoy the film if you haven't seen it. Bye, Gino. Ciao. Bye. Bye.